same basic story, which is that there's a guy named Link, there's a girl named Zelda, she's a princess, and there's an evil monster named Ganon. And typically the Zelda games fit the themes of, like, Link is a nobody farmer, nothing boy, you know, and he has to rise up with courage alone and gain the tools needed to save the princess. But, like, in this game, you're not saving the princess. If there was a character that was the princess, it's that chick who I can't remember if her name was Marin or Taryn. And, uh, she's not in trouble. She's standing right there. That's a dog. She's standing right there. And, uh, and without getting too spoilery, there's no Ganon. I mean, you're... I, I think that the story is really refreshing because it's not like you're not really fighting any evil and that is a little spoilery but uh and to spoil with being vague the plot is very similar to Mario 2 and how it turns out but your motivation of this game is just to uh, wake the wind fish there's a little mini game in here you can get your items and stuff off of here um, so this game's worth checking out. It's worth, honestly, I mean, they re-released it, like I said, this Link's Awakening DX was a Game Boy Color version, which has beautiful colors, which you can download on the 3DS, and, uh, and you can play it that way. I enjoy playing stuff on the old platform, actually playing on the Game Boy Color, which doesn't have a backlit screen even, but I still like it. This Super Game Boy is also acceptable for me of playing an old game. Um, you can get them on emulators too, which I don't find a problem with that. The only problem is that these games are available still, and I would recommend to still support Nintendo because it, is, it deserves a million dollars more for this game. Because this game is amazing. And, you know, like I said, underappreciated. The boomerang in this game is like freaking beastie. It's actually like a... Okay, like so in the first Zelda game, the first the item you get from the first castle is a boomerang. And it's just weak, it just stuns enemies. And, uh... And then your second item, a better boomerang. Like, that was a genius idea. You're like, I got an item! It's a boomerang, it goes halfway across the screen. And then, uh, next castle, I got another boomerang! It replaces my other boomerang, but it goes a little bit further. But in this game, like, it's like a secret item, you gotta go through some hoopla to get it. And it's not a stun, it's a kill. I mean, look at it, it, it clears right through the bushes. There's never been a Zelda boomerang as good. Even like the crazy one in uh, Wind Waker. Seeing that this is an Easter egg, kind of semi Easter egg boomerang. But uh, let's go, gotta grab my picking up thing. Let's go find an enemy. Bam. Here we go. It's not, see, it's not a stun. It kills. Bam. So, like, a lot of times, honestly, I'll just put my. my uh, Jumping boots on <laughs> my rocks feather and have a boomerang instead of the sword and then get knocked into a hole Man, I'm talking way too long um, The game breaking glitch of this Zelda game is If you are walking from one screen to another screen and You hit the select button right at the right time the select button brings up the map But if you bring up the map right as you go to the other screen I Didn't do it. It's like a timing thing. Let's see if that did it Nope. Okay, try again. Oh, no. I can do it. I can do it. Trust me. There we go. That was it. I know that I hit it that time. Now, what this glitch does is then when you take the map away, you see you're at the top of the screen. So you teleport to the extreme end of the screen where you were standing. And, uh... That actually is amazingly useful. Like, if I do it... Like, you can get stuck with it, definitely. But, uh, you can also use it to, to, like, shortcut to spots where you're not supposed to be able to get to. And, uh, so you can use it to glitch out a Zelda game and find the way that they designed it and stuff and see the way they laid out maps, which for a nerd like me is great. You can also use it to get items that you're not supposed to be able to get yet. You can use it to get hearts and stuff early. Because, let's go, to, oh, here, let's go, in, is this cave a cave? A magic cave? No, it's just a stupid fairy. But, uh, try this other cave. Now this cave doesn't have anything. Ah, maybe it does. No, this one won't work either. We'll find the thing. But are you seeing how amazing this boomerang is? You just one-shot anything. Overpowered. Gotta grab the picking up our thingy.
Here's a good example. See, right here. Say you didn't have the jumping power yet, and when you come to this obstacle, it's obviously that you don't have the jumping power yet. You're actually on the other side of it, but, uh, if you wanted to, say, come over here and get all this magic glory, you can do the trick. There you go. And now, you see it teleported me to the other side of that pit. It actually brought the enemy with me, that ghost from the graveyard. But I can one-shot him with my magic! But, uh, so anyway, it's an amazing shortcut. Now, the fact that it brings sprites on screen with you, too, can be useful because at this part here, normally there is a heart in there that you have to have your jumping power to get to. But if you do the trick right here, you can actually bring the heart with you. If you can do it. It's hard, okay? Don't judge me, guys. There you go. Now, I kind of got stuck in the wall, but what would have happened is the heart would have been sitting here in the middle of the screen then. Because I brought the heart with me. Hey, you see how they have the little tiles over there that look like cracked ground? Over here you can see the cracked ground tile, and if you stand on one for too long, you fall in the hole. Well, they put those out there for design, because you can't get on that wall. But, if you do the glitch... Ah, first try. And then you teleport over here, you can actually stand on those cracked ground and fall. And, uh, but now that you're outside the map, you can go anywhere, and you can explore. If you come down there, you fall down. Oh, man, I'm back in the map again. You go over here. Totally different cave with different enemies, and now we're going to be permadeath. That was a bad move. Bad move. Okay, so I got back here again. Let's try that again without making the ground fall through and actually be able to explore a glitch world. Man, I'm getting good at that. Now, uh, if we go up here, totally different cave. And you go over here, and it's like a watery part of the cave. And let's keep on going, because you can find some weird stuff. Oh no. What is this part? So this is this part. Let's get back out of the ground. Getting good. It's a different cave. Oh, see now I'm up in the mountains. You can do this kind of stuff in the mountains too. Uh, yeah, look, you know you'd have to go all the way through that cave. Say you're in a hurry and you don't want to. Glitch! It's, it's great, and like I said, it's game breaking, it's a teleport across the screen, it changes the thing of Zelda. But like, anywhere, like let's do it here, let's see what happens. stuck in the sky and then what oh look at that that's a perfect example of like ultimate glitching that's like an enemy you can dive underwater when you're swimming but it's like the chick character as a sprite and i'm below the map where you're not supposed to go ah stuck in the wall so that's the that's you know part of the the fun of glitching i don't know if the glitch is what i like so much about this game i mean i love the game it's a great game good storyline fun but then to be able to, without having to add any kind of cheat device onto it, be able to do some more fun glitching exploring. Check out this game if you have access to any of the millions of ways to play it, or if you're a Zelda fan and you, you never played it before. Because um, it's one that was easy to miss, but it, to me, some of the smaller, weirder Zelda games are like, they don't count for me, because they're, they're like, like, there are some of them that... I don't know, that they didn't really feel like they really embraced the Zelda everything. But this one, good game. Check it out.